But as we say, if you practice as a lawyer for 10 years, then you quit and you're quite happy with that, as we hear. Your son, Ty, will become a lawyer. Why would you want him? Well, I never thought either child would become a lawyer, and it was not something I encouraged. And I was certain that read my books, which I'm sure my children do read my books, though I never ask. I'm not going to, I don't want to be disappointed. Um, I just couldn't believe that he walked in one day after graduating from college and said, I'm going to law school. Uh, at the same time, I was very proud because I'm a lawyer, and now that he's out of law school, we have wonderful conversations about all aspects of the law, especially the big cases, the big cases before the Supreme Court, uh, the kind of really intriguing matters that we, uh, we they're fun to talk about, you know, over, over dinner. We, I never got close to litigating one of those cases, but, um, you know, we talk about the law constantly. And it's, it's always fascinating. And, that's, again, that's the one reason these books have been extremely popular is because we have such a fascination for the law, trials, lawyers, litigation. It's just part of you know what we are. You started publishing the books in 1988, more than 20 years ago, in a small publishing house called Winewood Press. This the first printing of The Time to Kill in Germany, it's called Die Jury was not more than 5,000 copies. And after that, every single book of yours was an extraordinary success. Ford County, as Das Gesetz is called in the US, was enormously successful since it came out in the US last year. It sold more than one million hardcover copies. Are there moments in your life in which you think back to your beginnings and remind yourself of how you started more than 20 years ago? It happens all the time. Uh, it, happen it still happens all the time. It's hard to believe it's been 20 years. It's, uh, still, it still feels uh, new and fresh and exciting, and the books are still a lot of fun to write. Um, writing this book uh, brought back a lot of memories of my first book. It's the same place, as it, the same setting as The Time to Kill, and it's, it's, even though it's all fiction, it's all true. It's where I'm from. These were the people that I knew. These were the clients that I had. These were the lawyers that I worked with and against. And it's a, it's small, a small town in Mississippi. And publishing it last year and even now um, brings back a lot of memories, not only of, of my first book and how difficult it was to get it published. And then once it was published, it didn't sell. You know, just in the stores. But also, a lot of memories of um, another lifetime, back when I was a lawyer in this, in this fictional county. The setting uh, is very interesting because it's Fort County doesn't exist. It's an invention of yours. Readers of yours know that it appears in a time to kill in the last juror. It's a region deep in the, in the south, in Mississippi. And to name two other very, very famous writers, Gabriel Garcia Marquez has his Macondo County, and of course William Faulkner's famous fictive microcosm, Yokna Padova County. Did Faulkner's Yokna Padova County serve as an example for Fort County? I never understood Faulkner's County. <laughs> <laughs> I never understood Faulkner. <laughs> When you grow up in Mississippi, there's some kind of a state law that requires every teacher to require every student to read Faulkner all the time. <laughs> and it, even the teachers often don't understand Faulkner. Uh, but we have, we, you know, we had to read. I think I've come to appreciate him more as I've gotten older, but it's still, it's still very dense and very hard to understand at times. Most of the books. Um, and, you know, I'm not, I don't think there was any inspiration from what he wrote because what he wrote was so different from what I'm trying to write. I can't say Faulkner inspired me. I'm, I'm always inspired by Faulkner's life and his um, devotion to his, his craft and his determination to 
to write something, some way, and pay the bills. And he struggled most of his life. He even went to Hollywood and wrote uh, bad screenplays to, to try to pay the bills. Uh, he always struggled until he won the Nobel Prize in, uh, in 1950. And then finally he had some, some success after that, but um, not much of inspiration. But you must like Faulkner because you helped and gave money in order to um, preserve Faulkner's estate. His, his estate is in our hometown of Oxford, Mississippi, and over the years it's sort of fallen uh, into, uh, it needed a good, a good renovation. And we helped uh, fund the effort to uh, raise some money to, to renovate Roanoke, which is one of the most beautiful writers' homes in America. Yeah, I mean, sure. Well, once, uh, once we reached the point to be, where we could um, do things like that, it was a lot of fun to, to help out with the, with the renovation.